sexism in science. These are 40, I think, really interesting facts about your brain. Ready? Let's crack on. Your brain is made up of 86 billion neurons. But an infant's brain has 100 billion neurons. Your brain consumes 20% of your body's total energy supply, despite only representing 2% of your overall body mass. Brain development begins at the back and works its way to the front. So your frontal lobes involved in planning and reasoning are one of the last structures in the brain to strengthen and develop and mature. Your brain doesn't finish developing until you're about 25 years old, but your spinal cord stops developing when you're four years old. Your brain may be full of neurons, but it does not feel pain. The meninges, so the layers around the brain do, but the brain? Nana. Nah. The planum temporale is this triangular structure that sits on top of another structure in the brain called the superior temporal gyrus. It is probably the most asymmetric structure in the brain. For about two thirds of individuals, it's larger on the left than it is on the right, about five times larger, but actually that dynamic is reversed in people with schizophrenia, where it's larger on the right than it is on the left. Secretion of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain varies anywhere from 400 to 600 mils per day in adults. The neocortex, which is most of what the cerebrum is made up from, is comprised of six layers. Most inputs into the cortex go to layers two and four, and most messages out come from layers five and six. Unlike peripheral nerves, nerves within our central nervous system can't remyelinate if they lose their myelin. That's why conditions like multiple sclerosis are irreversible. While excessive or prolonged pruning of neurons is associated with schizophrenia, so that's an excessive loss of neurons early on in the brain development, under pruning has been implicated in autism. The amount of testosterone in your brain increases at the start of sleep, the amount of growth hormone increases during slow wave sleep, and the amount of cortisol decreases. It takes three months until we develop a circadian rhythm when it comes to our release of melatonin to help in sleep, and cortisol that manages stress. 75% of adult sleep is non-REM, so it's non-rapid eye movement sleep. Babies spend over 50% of their time in REM sleep. In neonates, they can go straight into REM sleep as soon as they start going to sleep. Dopamine, noradrenaline, adrenaline, histamine, serotonin are all neurotransmitters that are made from a single amino acid. Anandamide is one of your brain's main endogenous cannabinoids. It's implicated in managing pain and has also been implicated in managing our intraocular pressure in our eye. Some places have said that if you took all the blood vessels in the brain and you laid them out, it would go on for 100,000 miles. That's wrong. It's more like 400 miles. Still pretty long, still pretty big. All in here. 750 to 1,000 mils of blood flows through your brain every minute. There is no such thing as a left brain or right brain personality. It's nonsense. The consistency of the brain is like soft tofu or gelatin. You can survive with only one cerebral hemisphere. This you only use 10% of your brain stuff is rubbish. You use your entire brain and you certainly use more than 10% even when you're asleep. Memories are incredibly unreliable and have a tendency to change over time. Context, emotions, motivations, cues, the frequency of remembering can all impact whether the memories that come to your conscious state are actually accurate. And that's the basis of therapies like EMDR in trauma. The idea that you have 70,000 thoughts a day, that's also a myth. It's more like 6,200, though again, that's still a lot. Size doesn't matter in the brain. At least there's no evidence that a larger brain is smarter or associated with greater intellect than a smaller brain. Most adults can store between five and nine items in their short-term memory. Your long-term memory's capacity for storage is virtually unlimited. Your brain contains mast cells that are the same types of cells important outside the brain in allergic and hypersensitivity reactions. They're actually likely to be really important in the way that neurons and your entire brain develop and form connections in the first place. Your body has its own endogenous, so internally created version of the psychedelic DMT dimethyltryptamine. It's named NN dimethyltryptamine. DMT is the psychedelic substance that's found in ayahuasca. Your brain's main excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate is actually made from your brain's main inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA which can then be recycled back to glutamate, which can then be recycled back to GABA. You have three major endogenous opioids, so opioids you make in your body, beta endorphin, dynorphin, and enkephalin. There are about 15 different serotonin receptors grouped into seven different families. So serotonin does loads of stuff in the brain, depending on what type of receptor it binds to and where. Your brain needs glutamate to form and strengthen connections between neurons, but too much glutamate can be toxic to the brain. It can cause irreversible damage that has been implicated in neurodegenerative illnesses like dementia and Parkinson's. 
and after a stroke it's called glutamate excitotoxicity. The B vitamin thiamine is important for the health of paired structures in your brain involved in memory formation called the mammillary bodies. These help lay down new memories, so a deficiency in thiamine can lead to anterior grade amnesia, so the inability to lay down and form new memories. Most of the serotonin in your body is not in your brain. It's in your gut, released from the entrochromaffin cells in response to food where it stimulates contraction of the bowel. By the age of 20, the average weight of the brain is between 1200 and 1400 grams. That's less than a bag of flour. Many research centers have brain banks, collections of brains that have been donated to science after someone's died. This helps with the study of neurodegenerative illnesses like dementia and Parkinson's, but can also help with the study of neuropsychiatric diseases like schizophrenia. Antidepressant treatments like the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors work by altering plasticity in key parts of the brain. So the way that neurons connect with one another, that includes the amygdala, the prefrontal cortex, the hippocampus amongst other structures. Psychological therapy does exactly the same thing. There have been plenty of studies that have found that a course of cognitive behavior therapy leads to similar changes in plasticity than are seen after being on SSRIs. There is no good quality convincing evidence of a structural difference in the brains between the sexes. There is good quality evidence of huge amounts of bias in the research that has proposed a structural difference in the brains between the sexes. Sexism in science. There you go, I thought those were interesting. Let me know what you thought though in the comments below. Did any of those stand out to you? Let me know what you thought. Otherwise, I'll see you soon for another video. Love you, bye.